Welcome back everyone, and that is the introduction to Raspberry Pi. Today we're going to explore what makes the Raspberry Pi so unique, why it's been such a hit worldwide, and the many ways it can be used. So whether you've heard about it before or this is all new to you, by the end of this lesson you'll know exactly what this tiny computer can do and why so many people love it. So what is the Raspberry Pi? Well, the Raspberry Pi is a small and affordable computer that packs a big punch. It was developed by the Raspberry Pi Foundation in the UK, and it was first launched back in 2012, so more than 10 years ago, with the goal of making computing and programming accessible to everyone. The name Raspberry is a nod to the tradition of naming early computer companies after a fruit, like Apple, while Pi reflects its original focus on the Python programming language. It's designed for learning, experimentation, and creativity. At its core, the Raspberry Pi is a tool for anyone who wants to explore coding, electronics, or build cool projects. What makes it truly special is its ability to bridge the gap between software and hardware. You can write just a few lines of code and see immediate results, like controlling an LED, reading data from a sensor, which is what we'll be doing today, or automating a simple task. Despite its small size, it's incredibly powerful and versatile, capable of running full operating system, hosting web servers, running applications, or even handling tasks like machine learning. So whether you are a beginner trying to learn the basics or a professional building prototypes, the Raspberry Pi has something to offer you, which is why it has become a favorite among hobbyists, educators, and engineers worldwide. So why was the Raspberry Pi even made? Well, the Raspberry Pi was created to solve a pressing problem, and that is around 2012, fewer people were learning how to code or pursue careers in computer science, creating a growing skills gap. So the Raspberry Pi Foundation at the time set out to address this by developing an affordable yet easy to use computer that could make programming accessible to everyone. Ever since, it's been inspiring millions of learners, hobbyists, and innovators. With its versatility, low cost, and strong community support, the Raspberry Pi has become a cornerstone for STEM education in DIY projects worldwide. Okay, so one thing to know really quick is that the Raspberry Pi isn't just one model anymore. Now, 13 years later, the, the, the company has started developing many different types of hardware, and that is there are many different types of Raspberry Pis, essentially. The most popular one and the one we'll be using today in this course is the Raspberry Pi model. Today, we'll be using the 4B version. So the higher the version, the more powerful it is, and it has typically more enhancements. I believe up to the time of this video, there is a five model, so that's a little more powerful than the 4B. That is overkill, we do not need that today, but if you do have a five model, you can follow along with this tutorial as well. Now the Raspberry Pi 4B is more than powerful enough to, to do the projects we are going to go over today. Perfect for coding, sensors, and even downloading applications, and even machine learning as well. You could do machine learning with the 4B if you're interested in that. There's also the Raspberry Pi Zero model, so this is a very popular one on the left. This is super small and affordable, great for portable and lightweight projects. And if you're into hardware programming or simply want something super lightweight, there's the Raspberry Pi Pico on the right. This is probably their, new, their newest board, I believe, and they even have the Pico W board, which supports internet. It is a microcontroller designed board for embedded systems, really powerful for the cost, and you can even get these boards for less than $10 at a time, so that's pretty cool. So it just shows that this organization has really evolved so much in the past 13 years, but all in all, we will be using a regular Raspberry Pi, and that is the Raspberry Pi 4B model. But depending on what you want to do, there is probably a Raspberry Pi out there that fits your needs, whether it's you're running on a low budget or want something super high powered, there probably is a Raspberry Pi out there that can suit your application's needs. So what can the Raspberry Pi actually do? Well, it can do a ton of things to answer that short, but let's give some specific examples here. First of all, it can be used as a regular desktop computer, running a full operating system where you can browse the web or just simply write code, just as you would use a Windows or a Mac. It's also great for controlling sensors and other electronics, making it perfect for IoT and automation projects. Do you love gaming? It can also be used to emulate retro games. You can even host a web server or turn it into a media center to stream your favorite movies. The possibilities are endless, and just a quick Google search will show you all the incredible ways this computer has been used across the span of time. So the Raspberry Pi isn't just for personal projects, it's being used across the world in many amazing ways for real life applications. People use it for home automation a lot of the times, like controlling lights in their house, cameras, and even thermostats. It's the backbone of many IoT devices out there, including weather stations, which is what we'll be building today, air quality monitors, and smart agriculture systems. In robotics, it powers creations ranging from line-falling robots to drones and even autonomous vehicles. 
Schools and universities use it to teach students coding, electronics, and artificial intelligence, while researchers leverage its powers for data collection and analysis in remote or challenging environments. I mean, it's truly been a game changer, fostering innovation across industries and empowering users of all ages to create solutions to real world problems. So why has the Raspberry Pi been so popular over the years? I think that stems from many reasons. The first one probably being its affordability, especially nowadays with models starting at just $10, like the Pico Pico W models. So that pretty much makes it accessible to almost everyone wanting to learn electronics uh, across any price range, which is which is amazing. It's also incredibly versatile, which we discussed. That is a given. It could be used for pretty much any IoT or electronics project. I mean, you just Google it and you'll probably find some way to do a project with a Raspberry Pi out there, whether it's a drone, a helicopter, you name it. Someone has used Raspberry Pi to do that thing. Beginners love it, especially because it's easy to get started. There is a massive community sharing tutorials, projects and advice. Plus, it's open source nature means you can experiment and learn without limits. So whether you're a student, a hobbyist, or a professional, the Raspberry Pi proves that powerful technology can be within everyone's reach. So we just got our Raspberry Pi set up in the previous segment, and we learned how to interact with it both from a GUI perspective and remotely as well, which was pretty cool. And now we're ready to write our first program in Python, and that is the Blink LED program. I'll walk you through the hardware setup and the code, so be sure you watch the previous segments to make sure you are caught up, and let's get started. So before we get into discussing the hardware and code, let's briefly touch upon the pins of the Raspberry Pi because we have it up to this point in the course. And so it's important we categorize and understand these pins at a high level when we are working with the Raspberry Pi because we'll, we'll pretty much be using them with every project in the future. So on the board, as you see there, there, there is a 40 pin header on the Raspberry Pi 4B model as well as other Raspberry Pi models up to the five. They share the same 40 pin header and these pins can be categorized into different categories. So first of all, we have power pins. So a few pins on the board are known as power pins, which provide five volts or 3.3 volts of power and they can be used to power external devices. We also have ground pins as well. So some pins are ground connections, essential for completing electrical circuits. So pretty much any component you attach will use a ground and a power pin. We also have GPIO pins, which are general purpose input output pins. They can be used to send or receive signals to things like LEDs, buttons and sensors. And there are also special purpose I squared C pins used to talk to sensors and devices like temperature or motion sensors. So we'll be using I squared C pins in the, in the next segment where we'll be interacting with a temperature sensor. We also have some other special purpose pins like SPI pins. So SPI is great for faster communication with components like displays or flash storage. We also have UART pins. So this is used for serial communication, such as connecting to a GPS module an external Bluetooth module and just any device that uses serial communication. We won't be using UART in this course, but if you are working with Raspberry Pi in the future, you are bound to interact with some module that requires a UART pin. And thankfully the Raspberry Pi has those. And now not everything on the Raspberry Pi is part of a pin header. For example, there is a dedicated CSI port connecting for connecting a camera module. And this is perfect for things like security cameras or photography projects or live streaming something. And it's really easy to use that, that camera module on the Raspberry Pi. The Pi also has an audio option with a 3.3 millimeter headphone jack for sound output. And it also supports Bluetooth. So it has a Bluetooth module on the board. And finally, just keep in mind that the GPIO pins for the Raspberry Pi operate at 3.3 volt signals only. So avoid sending them five volts to prevent damaging them. And there you go. That's pretty much a quick overview of the pins and the ports that make the Raspberry Pi such a powerful tool for electronics projects. Okay, so in terms of hardware setup, we pretty much have the same peripherals as we, as we did in part, as, as we did in the segment before this, where we have our HDMI, we have the power, we have our keyboard and our mouse attached. But on top of that, now what we have is we have this little breadboard with some simple components here and I'll go ahead and talk about this very briefly. So first of all, if you've never seen a breadboard, this is just a piece of hardware where you can make electrical, electrical connections in a more seamless and clean way. Because if you do not have this breadboard, pretty much what would happen is these wires would be all over the place and it would be hard to organize things. So we typically use a breadboard when prototyping because it makes working with your electronics a whole lot easier. So the purpose of a breadboard pretty much is to make your prototyping easier at a high level. So on this breadboard, let's talk about what we have. So let me go ahead and detach these real quick. And just 
focus on what we have on the breadboard. So on this breadboard, first of all, we have this little resistor component. So this resistor is a piece of hardware as well that pretty much will allow the limiting of a surge of current to reach this LED. So you can see we have the LED here on this board. And the reason we want this resistor is sometimes in rare scenarios that there can be an overcharge of current to the LED and it could potentially burn out your LED. So it's good practice to use these resistors when we are working with leds like this for our blink led project so we have a resistor on the board and we see on this board that the resistor both ends of the resistor are on the same the same row so that is row i'm just using row 16 it looks like but just make sure one end is on one side of the bridge and one end is on the other side of the bridge because as you see in the center of the breadboard the, the it's not connected from one side to the other but you can connect both sides with a resistor like this so it's it's going it's taking current from this side and reaching the other side so that's what's nice about this resistor is it does protect the led from potential burnout not that the we care too much about these leds because they're very cheap but it's just better to use those on top of the led we have a a jumper wire so this is called a male to female jumper wire so one end is has a is, has a tin sticking out and the other end is insertable so this one we can insert into the the Raspberry Pi in this other end, we can insert into the breadboard. So that's all we're doing. So that's on the same row as one end of the resistor. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is what's going to be receiving power. So this end is going to be receiving power from the Raspberry Pi on a GPIO pin. We're going to be using GPIO 17. So that is the sixth pin from the top. So one, two, three, four, five, six in this back row. So you see we are using GPIO 17. And if you're confused about that, you could just search pins on the Raspberry Pi online and it'll show you which one is GPIO 17. So that goes to the inputs of the, of the circuits. And then here we have this LED. So this LED, very common, it's just a, a two node LED. So one node takes power. So the longer side is what receives power and the shorter side is what goes to ground. And then each, each end of the resistor goes on a separate row on the breadboard. So the longer end attaches to the LED. So you see that the longer end is on the same row as the, as the uh, resistor, sorry. So the longer end is on the same row as the resistor. And then the shorter end is connected to row 15. And then it has another male to female jumper wire. So this is just going to complete the circuit. Remember how we talked about the ground pin is for completing the circuit. Well, this is the ground pin is connected to the shorter end of the LED on row 15. And we're just going to connect it to any ground pin on the Raspberry Pi. So I'm just going to use this third pin from the top. So one, two, three, and that is this third ground pin. So this is the completed circuit. Very simple circuits with our Raspberry Pi. We're using a GPIO pin, we're using a resistor to protect the LED. And then we're using this LED to, to to make a light so that's all the LED does it just turns on so it produces a light and if we have the circuit correctly we should be able to go into our python code and run a very simple script that turns on and off this led so make sure your raspberry pi is on and let's go back into our raspberry pi environment okay so let's jump back into our raspberry pi and we just want to make our python script i already went it I already went and made it off screen, but I'll just show you how to make it from scratch. So we could just go to the top left. We can go to programming and we're going to go into an editor. So editors allow us to edit and create code and manage things in our projects. So I'm just going to select the genies editor. And so this is what is showing when we open the genies editor, you can go ahead and make a new file. I already have my file created and it is blink.py. So I'm just going to open that. And if you, if you didn't have that, you can just go and make a new file and save it as what you like make sure you save it as a .py extension and just go ahead and copy the same content i have here so let's go over what's going on in the script at a high level so let me go ahead and zoom in first let's see if i can i believe it's like this or like this there we go so i'm zooming in i hope that's clear now so in the script what we're doing very simple python script that allows us to blink the led so in this first segment of the script we're just importing some libraries so these libraries allow us to do things easier in the code essentially so the first library allows us to interact with the gpio pins of the raspberry pi so you can go ahead and import rpi.gpio very common library when you are working with sensors in the raspberry pi next we have the time library so this is the time library it allows you to manage time within your code so down here what we're doing is we're actually using time.sleep to wait so we're going to turn the led on for one second and then we're going to we're going to measure time for for one second using that time library then we, we're going to turn it off and then we're going to measure time for a second and we're just going to repeat the cycle so the time library allows us to do that 
Next, we're setting the constant for the LED pin. So that is pin 17, the GPIO 17, as we talked about in the previous segment. And then we're just going to do some setup for that GPIO pin. So we're pretty much telling Raspberry Pi that we want to start using this GPIO pin at, at pin 17. And we want to be an out pin. Remember, GPIO is input output. It's going to be an output. So the GPIO pin is going to send an on or off signal output to the to the LED. And that is what's going to be turning it on and off. And then we just have a simple debug statement. So this is just going to say turning on and off. And once you get past this point, pretty much what it's going to do is this, this code is going to try running a while loop. And it's going to run this code forever until you exit the code or turn off your Raspberry Pi. And in this while loop, it's pretty much telling the GPIO pin to first set that LED pin as, as high. So high means on. And then wait and then turn it as off. So that is low. And that's pretty much what's happening in this code at a high level. We have some exception handling here. So keyboard interrupt. So that's if you interrupt the program with your keyboard. So you can exit with, with control C, I believe that'll exit the program. And then after that is all done, it'll finally clean up the GPIO pins. So this is just good practice to re reset the GPIO pins after you are done running any program that use GPIO pins. So I hope the program at a high level explained was simple enough for you to understand. And now that we understand that the program and we have everything connected, we're just going to go ahead and run this program. So in order to do that in Genie, we can go ahead and click this paper plane here and it should send it to the Raspberry Pi and the LED should start turning on and off. So it looks like it is turning on and off. If yours is not turning on and off, some simple troubleshooting, you can check your hardware components, make sure everything is touching the bottom of that breadboard. I just tried turning this on and off off camera and it wasn't working. And what I realized was my resistor wasn't pushed all the way into the breadboard. So that could be one thing as well. And just make sure everything is oriented properly and you are using the GPIO pins and you should see it turn on and off as you are seeing here on the screen.